This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 658, The Practical Benefits of Outrageous Optimism, part two, by Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is where I simply narrate blogs for you, sometimes books, always with permission from the authors. And today's episode is sponsored by Talkspace, the online therapy company that lets you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. Get matched with your perfect therapist who can put you on the path to a happier life. For a special offer just for our listeners, visit Talkspace.com slash OLD. In today's episode is a continuation from yesterday, a continuation of Mr. Money Mustache's favorite article he's ever written. I had to read it once I found that out. But it's a bit long, so I broke it up into two. If you're new here, I recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. For now, it's here part two and continue optimizing your life. The Practical Benefits of Outrageous Optimism, Part 2, by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. As it turns out, the human mind is exactly the target of the optimism gun. But does it really work? I found my own gun about 21 years ago, and I've certainly found it effective whenever I had the courage to apply it. It has helped me get an offer for every job I've ever applied to, earn and save more money than the pessimists assume possible, have a very nice family life, and be generally happy every day, as I'm sure you've heard more than enough. I also secretly use the OG Optimism Gun in this blog. In fact, I'm typing this article on the Bluetooth keyboard that was supplied with the device. And I'd argue that it is working here too, evidenced by the ridiculous spread of mustachianism to date. Because which is more likely, a software engineer who didn't even take an English class in university just happens to be the most amazing writer in the world with the most useful financial ideas as well? or that this blog just makes people feel good about their lives because it is much more optimistic than others writing on the topic, and this motivates them to try some new things. There are several psychological principles at work that make all this work on a practical level. Number one, humans are automatically drawn to leaders. Most people just wanna hang back with the crowd and shy away from pressure of standing out. As soon as somebody stands on the box and picks up the conch, people start listening. If you dare to express optimism about anything, you're stepping onto a little soapbox and it gets attention. Number two, people want it to be true. If you become a small-time leader and you deliver the good word, people will naturally want to keep listening because you help them feel good about things too. Soon your leadership position will start to grow a lot bigger. Number three, optimism tricks you into trying more things. If you believe success is almost guaranteed, you're gonna try some pretty fun ventures. In reality, sure, you fail at some things, but what do they always tell us is the best teacher? That's right, it's failure. So you end up racking up much more hard-earned experience and knowledge than the non-optimist. Meanwhile, everyone else is still hesitating to try the first thing. Number four, you are forced not to focus on things you can't control. One of the most useful lessons of the seven habits of highly effective people is that you never worry about stuff you cannot control. You just work on the things you can. As an example, I never watch the political debates or follow the polls for an upcoming presidential election. That doesn't help me at all, and it doesn't help you either. Instead, I just read the descriptions of the policies each candidate plans to put into place, evaluate those against my best guess at their long-term effects on the success of the world in general, not just based on my own situation, then send in my mail-in ballot long before the election day. Then I can be optimistic, because I've had my full say by voting, and I have hundreds of hours freed up to accomplish other things while the pessimists are still watching TV and worrying about the election. Number five, acknowledge and bow down to the placebo effect. When it comes to health and well-being, the mind controls the body way more than rational people like to admit. This isn't just new age medicine. The very thought of taking medicine that makes people better has a statistically significant effect on the outcome of medical tests. It is so real that scientists have to adjust for it by giving people fake pills, which make them better, in order to see if the real pills do even more than the fake ones. I enjoy hacking this fact to control my own health. I have a permanent belief that I'm unusually healthy and that this condition will persist forever. Even when I get sick, I look at it as a very temporary anomaly, always assuming I'll be back to full health by the next day. It usually proves to be true. Not only am I overdosing on the placebo effect, but these assumptions lead me to do the deliberate things one would do if one were preparing for a healthy 122-year lifespan as well. 
And on top of all this, the optimism is limiting the release of the human stress hormone cortisol, which tends to destroy health. The less you worry about health, the healthier you become. Number six, optimism is rare and deadly when combined with experience. If you're a smart guy or gal at your workplace, the other smart people are expecting you to be pessimistic just like them. You can sit at the lunch table discussing the chronic failures of management or the critically flawed design of the product you're all working on. But once you've proven your pessimism and realism chops are respected by the gang, then you gradually start playing some tricks. You can slip in ideas like, well, this project might actually turn out okay. All we have to do is rewrite the flying module from scratch and then get Schmidt to let us use it in release 2.0. I'm pretty sure I can do that. Your coworkers will be fooled into thinking that they really can do those things which they wouldn't have otherwise tried. As noted in point number three, these things occasionally work. As you hone your skills at tricking people into succeeding, you find yourself increasingly being sought after for CEO positions. So there you have it, from the perspective of both the motivational speaker and the engineer. This stuff really works on other people and on ourselves, and it's the source of most of the luck we experience in our lifetimes. So the only remaining barrier is Are you daring enough to be in this journey by turning the optimism gun on yourself? You just listened to part two of the post titled The Practical Benefits of Outrageous Optimism by Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com. And big thanks again to my sponsor for today's episode, Talkspace. Talkspace is the online therapy company that makes it easy to connect with an experienced, licensed therapist that you pick based on your preferences, and for much, much cheaper than traditional therapy, I would know. You can send your therapist audio messages, video messages, or even text messages, which I've never seen with traditional therapy, or you can do a live video chat. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and go through a rigorous screening process, plus have thousands of hours of supervised professional training. So to match with your perfect therapist, head on over to talkspace.com old. And as a special bonus just for you, you can use the code old to get $30 off your first month and show support for this podcast. That's the code OLD, and you can use that at talkspace.com slash OLD. Have a very happy Friday. So crazy that September is almost over. I hope you have a great start to your weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.